What's happening, friends? Welcome back to Dynamo DeFi. My name is Patrick, and on this channel, I talk about cryptocurrency, decentralized finance, and economics. Today's video is about one of the newest trends that has been sweeping the world of DeFi, and that is farming as a service, sometimes known as DeFi 3.0. The largest of the projects that's farming as a service is Multi-Chain Capital, ticker MCC. So in today's video, I'll be talking about what exactly farming as a service is and what its value proposition is to investors. And I'll, then I'll go through some of the details of MCC since this is, as far as I can tell, the largest and arguably oldest of these projects. I'll also mention a few other farming as a service projects that have been getting some attention, but I won't go into detail on them. And before I go any further, I want to say that I know there's a lot of these projects, so if I don't mention your favorite one, I apologize. I can only vet and cover so many. Uh, and if you have one that either I mention or I don't mention that you think is unique enough for me to go into more detail on, feel free to drop a request down in the comments below. Uh, also, before I go any further, I want to remind everyone that nothing in this video is suggesting that you should purchase these projects. It's just an informational video to help you do your own research. Now let's jump a bit into what farming as a service is. So uh, basically, you know, people who watch this channel, many of you probably do your own DeFi farming. You use different protocols on various different chains and you use those to earn yield with your cryptocurrency. As more and more people enter the world of crypto and DeFi, or they are in the world of crypto, but maybe they they are focused on play to earn gaming and don't have time to, to dive into DeFi, they may want a service that does farming for them, that allows them to earn yield on their crypto in a way besides just staking. That's where farming as a service protocols come in, where by holding the project token, you are able to gain access in various different ways to the yields that they're earning by farming their treasury. Uh, in some ways, you could think of it as a decentralized hedge fund that anyone can buy into. Uh, and the important thing to note with that example is that in the world outside of crypto, there are hedge funds with tens or even hundreds of billions of dollars of assets under management. So, so, so it is a huge, huge market and a decentralized hedge fund. If uh, if its treasury got large enough, you know, uh, there's no reason that it couldn't rival one of these traditional hedge funds. I guess perhaps the, the only limitation would be the total market cap of cryptocurrency right now. Uh, in, another example that I think would be good is that mutual funds, which many people buy into in the stock market, own a huge portion of total equities in most markets. So, you know, a, a large portion of equities, if you look at any given, any given company, they're not actually owned by individuals with their retirement accounts or in their, you know, Robinhood or Schwab or whatever service you use, a large portion of them are actually owned by mutual funds. And then people buy the mutual funds because, you know, suppose you want to invest in the S&P 500. You might not, you probably don't want to actually go through and buy all those companies yourself because that's going to take a lot of time. So to save time and effort, you may just buy into a mutual fund that tracks the S&P 500 or, or perhaps you buy into an index fund. Uh, and, and so you could think of these farming as a services, almost like those, but for DeFi in theory, if they're done properly. And, and, and many of these are less than two months old, so they are still finding their footing. So that's what farming as a service is. And how exactly does MCC work? Since like I mentioned, it, it is the, the uh, sort of one that birthed many of these other projects. So uh, MCC is on Ethereum and Binance Smart Chain, like you can see on the screen. That's the first important thing to know. And basically when you purchase MCC, you pay a tax, which is around 10%, and half of that gets reflected to current owners. So a lot of people talk about reflecting if they own MCC, you know, they're earning reflections. Uh, and, and that's because of that tax. The other tax goes into the treasury and is used to farm. And then, and then the proceeds from that farming are used to, to buy back MCC from the market and either burn it or deposit it into liquidity. But, you know, and when they deposit it into liquidity, they're locking it for, I believe, 100 years. So so, so it's basically taken off the market where, where it can no longer be bought and sold like normal coins. Um, and and that, that's how it works in a nutshell. And if we go to this dashboard that they set up, the assets under management for some reason is not 
loading today. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why. Uh, perhaps perhaps if I, if I change the network that my wallet is on, it will work. But, um, but you can see here that the market cap is just under $100 million, uh, which is relatively low. You know, that, that is a small cap. And the assets under management, although it's not loading, I, I know that it's around $12 million. And so that's $12 million that they have on Phantom, Ethereum, Avalanche, Polygon, and Binance Smart Chain. And then they also have between six and seven hundred thousand dollars that they are uh, that they have in their marketing and development fund for them to help promote this project. Because of course, the more people that buy in, the the more taxes will go into their treasury. It also has twenty three thousand holders, which is a pretty solid amount of holders. Um, and and if you go to the buyback section, for example, you can see the buybacks they do. They've done about one and a half million dollars of buybacks, and and uh, some of them have been compared to the market cap decently substantial. I mean, that's more than one percent of the of the market cap right there, which is which is not bad. Um, and look, the holders is now over over twenty three thousand just since I started making this video. Um, and, and so that's basically how MCC works in a nutshell. Now, if you look at the investments they've made since if you're looking to invest in this, you're probably curious. They've bought, for example, 15,000 link tokens. So they, they have Chainlink. They have 20 strong nodes, which return about 1% per day. And the value of those is around 140,000. They're invested in Wonderland and more. They're invested in liquidity pools across liquidity pools, staking projects and other things across all these different networks. They also announced an interesting flagship project just a few days ago. So this is something called multi-print. And this is a staking feature for MCC where people will be able to stake it on either Ethereum or Binance Smart Chain. And they'll be able to stake it into different pools for one to three months. And based on which pool they stake in, they'll earn different tokens. For example, the blue chip pool where they earn ETH and Link, the Wonderland special where they earn MIM and Time, and so on and so forth. And, uh, and then they have a rotating rewards pool, which is, which is pretty interesting where you can earn tokens that are sort of popular the flavor of the day, like Metis and Butterfly. Butterfly is the token for something called Redacted Cartel. And and, and, and I think that this is going to be decently popular because there, there probably are people who, who who like the idea of earning these tokens with rewards without having to act, actively manage the farms themselves. We'll see how popular it will be. Um, as far as the price of MCC goes, it has retraced quite a bit from its all-time high. It, it is uh, it bounced back a bit today, but you, but you can see it's still down uh, almost 50% from its all-time high, which is, which is a pretty nice tip. Uh, also, if you look this up, be sure to look up the new contract address. If there was an old one, then they had there was a bug in the original contract address. So they had to migrate to a new contract address. Uh, and, and that's basically what MCC and farming as a service is in a nutshell. As far as the risks on this, I do see a few. First is that you are taxed when you're buying and you're taxed when you're selling. So that means that in order to make back your initial investment, just to recoup it, the reflections and the price increases have to get to almost or around 20%. And that is quite a tall, you know, quite a tall order. I mean, in crypto, that's more than possible, but th that does set you back quite a bit. The other risk I see specifically for MCC is that there are a number of farming as a service projects. And although the original of these projects typically does well, there's no guarantee that it will stay the leader forever. For example, Pangolin Swap was the original DEX on Avalanche, and then Trader Joe overtook them. So, so these things do happen in cryptocurrency. So the leader is not necessarily safe. And the other risk I see is that the market cap currently is even with this dip, several times the assets under management. Like I said, the market cap is close to 100 million and the assets under management is, is more like 12 million. And so, so, so it is, and it should trade at a bit of a premium. It should trade at a bit of a premium because they are farming those rewards. You have to take into account the, the fact that, that, you know, there's going to be some speculative value in there, but, but, uh, but if it is trading at a premium, which means there could be room for compression in the event that the market goes risk off. But, but that is MCC. Uh, and like I said, I'll mention a few other projects. And these ones I have not looked into as deeply, but these seem to be the 
leader, the other leaders in the farming as a service race. One is refi, also known as re reimagined finance. You can look them up here. Another one is CCC or cross chain capital, which is on avalanche network. And then we have scary chain capital, capital SCC, which is on phantom. So keeping with the theme of ghosts and other scary things on phantom. And, and each of these are doing their own unique things, but, but in the interest of time, I can't go into all of them in this video. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know down below. And if you have any other farming as a service projects you want me to look into, also feel free to drop a request. If you found this helpful, please like, subscribe, and follow me on Twitter. And until next time, this is Dynamo DeFi.